What are you doing here? Why this dog is shouting? Are this dog is telling physics class is going to start and you are playing in a playground? Are physics is more interesting okay, than so playing in the playground? Students, today we are discussing about the concept of modes of vibration in a stretched string. Before that, we should understand what is the speed of uh, sound in a stretched string. Let us consider a rope. Okay, so when you take a rope, this rope is fixed to the rigid support. The rope is fixed to the rigid support at the right side. From this end, you are shaking the rope up and down. Then this type of loops are forming here. And these loops move forward with a speed V. Okay. So these loops are moving forward with a speed V here. If these loops are for, uh, moving forward with a velocity V or speed V, whatever it may be, then how can you determine the speed of sound here? I mean speed of wave in a stretched string. So for that, let us consider this part of the string separately and discuss about what is that going to do here. So in this string, I have taken a part of the string I have drawn here separately. So if you consider this as a uh, string here, and this is just like a arc of a sector, okay? And uh, what is an angle here? That angle is going to be theta. You know length of the small part of the string is taken as length dl here. So you know that arc is equal to radius into angle. So what is this arc here? Uh, arc is equal to dl, this is going to be radius and angle is going to be theta here. So you have to remember that dl is equal to r into theta. So when I have taken this string separately here, there is a tension created in the string. What is the tension created in the string we shall discuss here. You know tension is nothing but stiffness created and that stiffness is because wave travels. When a wave travels, a type of stiffness is created, a type of tension is created in the rope. And this uh, part of a rope, if you consider, tension always acts tangentially. So in this direction, tension is acting. Here in this direction, tension is acting. Then I have to consider the component. If this is angle theta, these two are going to be same angle theta here. Okay. So if this is theta by 2, if this is also considered as theta by 2, so theta by 2, theta by 2, here also theta by 2 and here also theta by 2. Okay. So when you consider these two uh, angles are going to be theta by 2 and theta by 2, let us consider what are the forces acting here. So in this direction, t cos theta by 2, t cos theta by 2 adjacent to the angles here. But in this direction, the component t sin theta by 2, t sin theta by 2 is acting in this direction. So when a wave is traveling here, I am selecting a part of a wave in which the forces, that is the tensions acting in this direction is t cos theta by 2, t cos theta by 2, t sin theta by 2, um, t sin theta by 2 are acting downwards here like this. So this is the tension. Next, what is the net force acting on that we shall discuss. The net force acting on this string is considered to be, the net force can be considered as Fn is equal to 2t sin theta by 2. If angles are very very small, you know according to mathematical concept, if sin theta is very very small, if theta is very very small, I can consider sin theta equal to theta here. Okay, that is, if theta is very very small, I can write sin theta is equal to theta here. So therefore, the net force acting on this string is downwards. That is considered as 2t theta by 2. So, t, I mean 2, 2 gets cancelled, therefore we write uh, f is equal to t into theta. This is equation number 1, you have to remember. So, this is going to be equation number 1 here. Okay. So, if this is going to be equation number 1, then what are the remaining forces which can be considered acting on this string here? So, if you consider on the string here, I will discuss about what are the remaining forces acting here. On this string, that is called as part of a string, you can consider even centrifugal force is also acting. Centrifugal force and centripetal force, both are acting on that. See, centripetal force is nothing but this one, which is acting towards the center. And centrifugal force is which is acting away from the center. So you know this force is considered to be T into theta and centrifugal force you need to find out here. And what is the formula for centripetal or centrifugal force? 
you can consider the formula going to be mv square by r here okay so the formula for the centrifugal force or centrifugal force is mv square by r so how are you going to find out this one mass of this rope you know mass is equal to length into mu that is called as linear density you know linear density is nothing but mass per unit length mu is considered as mass per unit length what is the meaning of this if you consider this as a rope the mass of the rope is m and the length of the rope is taken as l here then you can consider uh, linear density is going to be mass per unit length mass per unit length so this is going to be the formula for linear density so but i am considering only the part of a, a rope this rope is having the mass m so i am taking only small part of a rope which is called as differentiated part of a rope which can be considered as dm dm means differentiated part that is a part which is removed from the string is considered to be dm here so if you, if this is going to be dm here then what is the formula you are going to write now this is the general formula for centrifugal force this can be considered as dm into v square by r okay so as mu is equal to m by l what are you going to write dm here dm can be considered as a mu into small part dl because m is equal to mu into l this is a general formula according to linear density linear density is nothing but mass per unit length mass is equal to linear density into length so small part of a mass is nothing but this is a small part of a length from the whole string you are considering so dm is equal to mu into dl you are writing here so therefore i can replace here but you know that this is a art of a sec art of a sector i have considered dl going to be r into theta i have written so i can just replace here a uh, mu can be taken as like that only but dl can be written as r into theta here so i got the formula for dm which is considered to be mu into r into theta here so i can replace here that is the force which is acting let us consider the force which is acting downwards is f1 and the force which is acting away from the center is taken as f2 okay so i am finding f2 here f2 is equal dm into v square by r so if this is dm then instead of dm you can write mu into r into theta here and you can write this as v square by r okay if you consider small r you have to consider small r only both the sides you can consider small r so f2 how much you are going to get here so this r and this r is going to cancel here so therefore f2 you are going to get mu into theta into v square so mu into theta into v square is nothing but f2 okay so what is f1 we are getting f1 here you have taken i, I told you to consider this as f1 so this f1 force which is considered as t into theta so this is equation number 2 if you consider this is equation number 1 so try to understand in this swing a wave is traveling which creates certain tension here so tension always acts tangentially so this is t this is t and this is t cos theta by 2 this is t cos theta by 2 this is t sin theta by 2 t sin theta by 2 so therefore f1 is 2t sin theta by 2 if angle is very very small i can consider sin theta equal to theta here so instead of sin theta by 2 i have taken theta by 2 2 2 gets cancel here so therefore i will get f1 is equal to t into theta here so i am getting f1 is equal to t into theta whereas f2 is considered as uh, centrifugal force so what is the general formula for centrifugal force mv square by r so instead of m i am taking only the smallest part of the wire whose length is dl and mass is dm so instead of m i am writing dm into v square by r so i told you that mass is equal to linear density into length so dm is equal to mu into dl and dl can be taken as r into length here because according to mensuration concept r is equal to radius into angle here so we got these two equations here you can make one equal to two here so when these two equations are going to be same here then what are you going to write here you are going to write one thing that is t into theta is equal to mu into theta into v square so theta theta gets cancel here so when these angles theta and theta are going to be cancel then you will get v square is equal to t by mu and v is equal to under root of t by mu so we have determined the speed of wave in a stretched string to be t by mu i think you understood 
So now we shall go for modes of vibration in a stretched string. There are three modes of vibration in a stretched string. So you can take a screenshot of this concept. Then. So from this derivation, you got an idea what is the speed of sound here. So you can write the speed of sound is going to be root of t by mu in a stretched string. With this you understand that v is directly proportional to root t and v is inversely proportional to root, mu, root of mu here. Okay. So velocity is directly proportional to square root of tension means tension increases, speed increases. Tension decreases, speed decreases. Here. Density of a wire increases, speed decreases. That is the meaning here. So what is going to happen? Let us see. See, you have taken a wire of length L. Now, if this was a wire previously, what are you going to do? At the middle, you are going to pluck it down. Exactly at half of the length, that is at this point, you will pluck the wire. When you pluck the wire, it starts vibrating like this. Okay? It starts vibrating like this. This is a wire of a guitar you can imagine. You can imagine to be a wire of a guitar. So if you pluck at exactly L by 2, what is going to happen? So you can write like this. Pluck at L by 2. So when you are going to pluck at L by 2, you are getting two nodes and one anti-node. What is the meaning of node and anti-node we shall discuss here. See, according to English dictionaries of Oxford, node means a knot. Not means you are just uh, considered to be a rope which is con uh, which can be converted into a knot. So this is just like a knot here. So knot is a place where the vibrations will be almost minimum and zero. Antinode is a point where vibrations can be considered to be maximum here. So this is a point where vibrations of a particles are going to be maximum. These are called as nodes where the vibrations of the particles are going to be minimum. And what is the length between the two nodes? It is going to be half of the wavelength. Why is it so? Why is it considered as half of the wavelength? That we shall discuss here. So why it is considered to be half of the wavelength? So let us consider one string in which I am considering a wave here like this. Okay. And let us imagine that the wave is returning back in this opposite direction now. So here how many loops are formed? Two loops are formed. Then this is going to be node, this is another node at this place, this is another node, okay. So if this is the case here, you know that this is going to be the complete wave. How much it is? From this point to this point, this is a complete wave you can consider, which is going to start from here and it is ending at this place. And what is the length of this wave? It is considered as lambda, okay. So now afterward, if you consider the distance between the two nodes, how much will be the distance between the node and the node? It is going to be... Uh, the distance is going to be exactly lambda by 2. That is going to be half of the wavelength here. Okay. So then afterwards, if you consider node and an anti-node, the distance between node and the next anti-node is considered to be lambda by 4. Okay. So this is wavelength. Distance between two successive nodes is lambda by 2. Similarly, distance between two successive anti-nodes is also going to be lambda by 2. So here this is lambda by 2. Anti-nodes is also lambda by 2. Successive nodes is also lambda by 2. But the distance between the node and the next antinode is going to be lambda by 4. So this is the data you need to remember here. So this is a situation. Let us see what is going to happen now. So in these are the three cases. First mode of vibration, second mode of vibration, and third mode of vibration in a stretched string. Here string is going to be same. But the plucking point is going to be different here. So at this place, you are going to pluck at exactly L by 2. Here if you observe you are plucking at this place. This is called as a plucking point here. This is called as a plucking point. Here this is going to be the plucking point. So you are going to pluck at L by 4. Exactly at this point you are going to find. This is going to be the length of the string. At this point exactly at L by 4 if you pluck you will get two loops. Previously got only one loop. Length of the string is same but loop formation is different here. So here the wave is larger and this is the half of the part of the wave. Here wave ha wavelength has reduced. Here wavelength has reduced here. So I am taking the first wavelength as lambda 1. 
the second wavelength as lambda 2 and the third wavelength is taken as lambda 3 because it is going to change here okay so then let us see what is going to happen now so here if you are going to adjust and uh, consider the first mode you are plucking at l by 2 here you are plucking at l by 4 and here you are plucking at exactly l by 6 this is called as a point of plucking here okay so wherever you pluck you will get anti node you are plucking here you will get anti node you are plucking here you are getting anti node here you are plucking you are getting anti node see first loop if it forms the remaining loops it is forming automatically so you are plucking for first loop remaining loop automatically forms here okay so if this is the situation let us consider so in these three cases what is the concept you need to understand here i will discuss so here velocity of the velocity of a wave in a string is not going to change if at all if something is changing frequency is changing and wavelength is changing because v is equal to n lambda n is equal to v by lambda n can be considered as inversely proportional to lambda here n is inversely proportional to lambda then after that in this first mode of vibration if you observe you are going to see one thing what is that you this is a general formula i am writing here so at this particular situation you will observe that velocity of the wave in a string is considered to be n1 lambda 1 here velocity of a wave is considered to be n2 lambda 2 here velocity of a wave is considered to be n3 lambda 3 see velocity is not going to change frequency is changing and wavelength is changing one is increasing means one is going to decrease here so first part wavelength is more second wavelength of the wave has been reduced so wavelength has reduced means frequency will increase here we shall discuss about how the frequency is going to increase so if you observe this condition just know it is written that it is lambda 1 by 2 then what is lambda 1 lambda 1 is considered to be 2 into l so lambda 1 is considered to be 2 into l here then what are you going to write now so n1 is equal to v by lambda 1 n1 is considered to be v by lambda 1 so n1 is equal to lambda 1 can be written as 1 by 2 l this v separately if you consider then it can be written as 1 by 2 l root of t by mu so first mode of vibration which is called as fundamental mode of vibration is considered to be n1 is equal to 1 by 2 l root of t by mu so we got the first mode of vibration then second mode of vibration how much it is so if you observe what is the distance between the node and the node it is lambda 1 by 2 but in this case the distance between this node and this node okay so here you know that the distance between the two successive nodes is lambda by 2 here so previously the wavelength is considered to be lambda 1 here wavelength is considered to be lambda 2 here wavelength is considered to be lambda by 3 here that's why the distance between two successive nodes is taken as lambda by 2 so lambda 2 by 2 here it is lambda 2 by 2 the distance between the two successive nodes here is considered to be like this so from here to here it is lambda by lambda 3 by 2 from here to here it is lambda 3 by 2 and from again here to here it is considered to be lambda 3 by 2 2 here okay so lambda 3 by 2 lambda 3 by 2 lambda 3 by 2 so therefore the total length is going to be l in uh, 3 into lambda 3 by 2 okay so lambda 3 by 2 lambda 3 by 2 lambda 3 by 2 you add this one 3 lambda 3 by 2 you are getting okay so previously velocity was n1 lambda 1 now velocity is n2 lambda 2 here the velocity is going to be n3 lambda 3 here so therefore we write n2 is equal to v by lambda 2 and you know that from here you will get lambda 2 is going to be L. Therefore this can be taken as V by L. Because lambda 2 is going to be L. This can be considered as V by L here. So you can write like this. N2 is equal to V by L. And uh, this you know V can be written as root of T by mu according to the concept of velocity in a stretched thing that is T by mu. Therefore N2 is equal to we are getting 1 by L into root of t by mu and you can multiply 1 2 and divide with 1 2 here and you can make a bracket of this then you will be getting n2 is equal to 2 times of n1 
because n one is equal to one by two l root of t by mu. Here you can write n three is equal to v by lambda three. According to the previous case, the distance between the two nodes is lambda three by two. So like this, there are three sections. So three lambda three by two you are taking. So n three is equal to v by lambda three, and uh, from here you will get lambda three is equal to two l by three. So to cross multiply for do two l by three are getting lambda three. Therefore we can write this as v by two l divided by three. N three is equal to three v by two l. You are writing, and you know that this can be written as one by two l. You can just substitute the value of v here. That is going to be root of t by mu. Okay, so this is one by two l. Three is taken outside of the bracket, and v is taken as root of t by mu. Therefore, we can write N three is equal to three times of n1 here n2 is equal to 2 times of n1 and there that is going to be n1 so from this you'll understand one ratio what is that ratio n1 is to n2 is to n3 and so on is going to be 1 is to 2 is to 3 and so on okay so this is the concept of modes of vibration in a stretched string okay so this is very important concept thank you very much